Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about SLE. SLE means Systemic Lupus Erythematosus. SLE is a multi-system inflammatory disease. It's an autoimmune disease. Autoantibodies means antibodies are formed against one's own body. That is autoimmune disease. SLE is one of the most common multi-system connective tissue disorders. It's mainly seen in uh, women, uh, especially in the childbearing age group. Uh, women to uh, men ratio is around 9 is to 1. So that much high incidence of SLE is seen in women. SLE can be uh, present as an acute complication or it can present as a chronic disease or sometimes acute on chronic inflammation. So there will be a remission and uh, relapse uh, sequence is seen in SLE. If you see the criteria for SLE, there are a lot of diagnostic features. Out of these diagnostic features, at least four should be positive. The most important clinical feature for SLE, that is systemic lupus erythematosus, that erythematosus rash. Erythematous rash that is mainly seen in the face. Malar rash or butterfly rash is seen in around 50% of the patients. Discoid rash that is circular rash especially in the trunk seen in 20% of the patients. Photosensitivity is seen in large number of patients around 70% you can see. Exposure to sunlight can produce severe rash especially on the face and neck. Repeated oral ulcers seen in 40% of the patients. They are painless ulcers. Non-deforming arthritis is seen in 60% of uh, patients. They are non-erosive, non-deforming arthritis. Uh, in rheumatoid arthritis and all, it is erosive and deforming arthritis. Here it is non-deforming arthritis. Polycirrhositis is seen in 30 to 50%. You can get pleuritis, pleural effusion, pericarditis, pericardial effusion. Kidney disorders are seen in around 30 to 35 patients. Patient can have proteinuria or renal failure. Neurological disorders are seen in uh, nearly 20 to 40 percent. Patient can have psychosis, seizures, neuropathy, all these things. Hematological disorders are seen in uh, large number of patients. Around 65 patients, percent of patients can have leukopenia. Uh, lymphopenia is seen in 50 percent. Hemolytic anemia is seen in 10 percent. Thrombocytopenia is one uh, classical finding, but it is seen only in 15 percent. Immunological markers like anti-DS, DNA, 80% of the patients it will be positive. Anti-phospholipid antibodies are seen in 50%. Anti-SM uh, antibodies are seen in 25%. ANA is highly positive in these conditions. Around 98% of the patients ca can have ANA positivity. But ANA positivity does not tell that patient is having SLE. You should have clinical findings, ANA positivity with DNA, uh, anti-DS DNA positivity, then only we can possibly make a diagnosis. So out of all these criteria, for if they are positive, then you can tell possibly it is SLE. Specificity is 95%, sensitivity is 75%. You can see here patient is having butterfly rash on the face. That is a classical feature. Discoid rash on the uh, chest. Remember that the disease is more common in females. Male, the disease is very, very rare, but if uh, SLE in male patients are dangerous. Now, we will see the clinical features. We have already seen the clinical features like butterfly rash, malar rash, uh, discoid rash. More, more than that, patient can have generalized weakness, anorexia, weight loss, all these things. Patient can have arthralgia, myalgia, uh, or myositis, ischemic bone necrosis. Photosensitivity, malar rash, oral ulcers are very common. Uh, multiple allergic episodes are very, very common. Hematological poly, uh, you can get anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, splenomegaly, lymphadenopathy. Neurological uh, conditions like seizures and peripheral neuropathy. All these are common clinical findings of SLE. Sometimes SLE can involve the internal organs, like patient can have heart disease, lung disease, liver disease, kidney disease. Patient can have pleuritis, pericarditis, uh, myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism, endocarditis, uh, abdominal pain, ischemic gastritis, lupus hepatitis, 
Reynolds phenomenon, there is ob obstruction to the peripheral vasculatures, uh, dry eye, dry mouth, recurrent thrombosis, visual loss, recurrent pregnancy loss, uh, renal uh, system involvement is very very common, many patients can have uh, renal failure, acute renal failure uh, and proteinuria. One of the major complications of SLE, especially in female, is antiphospholipid syndrome. Okay, antiphospholipid syndrome means patient can have recurrent thrombosis and some patients can have complication during pregnancy. Recurrent thrombosis means they can have deep vein thrombosis, they can have pulmonary embolism, they can have stroke, myocardial infarction, all these things are common. Pregnancy complications are they can have recurrent abortions. That is very, very important. Recurrent abortions are classical feature of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. So, unexplained uh, fetus loss that is very very common in antiphospholipid syndrome. So, recurrent thrombosis in a normal person and recurrent abortions in a pregnant lady may indicate antiphospholipid syndrome. That is a part of SLE. APS can present as a part of SLE or without SLE also it can present. If you see the lab investigation, any patient who is having SLE, we have to see a ESR and CRP. ESR and CRP will be elevated in almost all types of uh, inf inflammatory conditions. Patient can have anemia, leukopenia. One classical clinic uh, lab finding is lymphopenia. Thrombocytopenia is classical. Many patients can have elevated liver enzymes are seen in lupus hepatitis. Proteinuria can be there in many patients. Some patients can have ele elevated creatinine. X-ray may shows interstitial lung disease, pneumonitis, bilateral pleural effusion, all these things can be there in X-ray. ECG may shows clinical ECG findings of pericarditis and pericardial effusion can be there. Complement levels are classically reduced in acute condition. These complements are utilized for uh, antibody complement mediated injury. So, complements are utilized and they are reduced in uh, active diseases, especially in renal diseases. The problem with uh, SLE is whenever SLE patients are coming uh, with an emergency like a suspected lung infiltration or uh, inflammation, you will not be knowing whether it is an infectious core or an active uh, problem due to SLE. So procalcitonin level may tell you that this is an inf infectious condition or an inflammatory condition. CRP will be elevated. If procalcitonin is elevated, mostly it is an infectious cause in SLE because they are they are on uh, these patients are on uh, immunosuppressants so there is a high chance of infection so procalcitonin is a good investigation in emergency room to tell whether it's an infectious uh, exacerbation or inflammatory exacerbation now we'll see the antibodies which are specific to sle diagnosis ana is very very uh, important in a diagnosis of sle 98 percentage of patients you can see ana but the problem with ana is there are a lot of other conditions ana will be positive so ana alone will not give a diagnosis of sle or without any clinical feature never do ana many normal patients persons also can have ana positivity DSDNA is also positive in 80% of the patients. That is a very good investigation for diagnosis uh, SLE. It is very specific for SLE. High titers correlate with disease activity and nephritis and vasculitis. So whenever you have an SLE patient on treatment, if the patient's DSDNA is very low, then disease activity is not there. Suppose a patient comes with an uh, acute problem in SLE like an infection or inflammation to emergency room. You do the DSDNA, if it is very low, then you have to think about an alternative cause for the uh, aggravated problem. If the DSDNA levels are very high, then you think that it is an exacerbation of SLA. Other antibodies like anti-Smith and anti-SM, 25% it will be positive. It is specific for SLA, but it can be seen in other conditions also. anti un rnp is seen in around 40% of the patients. It is mainly seen in overlap syndrome. Overlap syndrome means patient can have SLE with rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma uh, features. So overlap syndrome, it is very, uh, this uh, investigation is very uh, commonly positive, anti-U1 RNP. Anti-histones are positive in drug-induced SLE. Drug-induced SLE is seen in methyl dopa, penicillamine, phenytoin, carbamazepine uh, and lithium. So all these conditions, uh, uh, is anti-histone will be positive. Anti ROSSA and R anti LASSB that can be positive in uh, patients who is having uh, pregnancy 
and if there is a neonatal lupus or congenital heart block because of this problem this will be positive so in a pregnant lady if you do anti ROSSA and anti LASSB positivity means you have to investigate child or uh, the fetus for neonatal lupus or congenital heart block anti cardiolipin antibody and lupus anticoagulant this is very uh, very specific for uh, repeated thromboembolism or antiphospholipid syndrome so antiphospholipid syndrome uh, if you suspect you have to do anti cardiolipin antibody and lupus anticoagulant management of sle is very very important most important thing is if the patient is a smoker ask them to stop smoking sun protective uh, measures should be taken uh, you can a patient can use uh, uh, sunscreens skin lesions if the patient is having predominant skin lesions hydroxychloroquine sulfate is a very good choice 200 to 400 mg per day can be given only important thing is whenever the patient is on long standing hydroxychloroquine if they exposed to sunlight that itself will produce blackening of skin and every 6 months we have to uh, uh, the patient has to undergo ophthalmological evaluation for retinal pigmentation if the patient is having predominant arthritis we can treat with nsaids hydroxychloroquine methotrexate like rheumatoid arthritis with folic acid so arthritis means you can go for treatment like uh, rheumatoid arthritis now if the patient is coming with an acute problem then you have to go for higher dose of medicines like iv methylprednisolone 1000 my mg per day for 3 days it's a bolus dose uh, uh, it's a pulse therapy then you can switch to oral prednisolone 1 to 2 mg per kg body weight daily and the minimum dose should be given is 7.5 mg to 10 mg per day iv cyclophosphamide is an alternative for pulse therapy 40 to 50 mg per kg iv can be given Uh, that is an alternative to methylprednisolone iv dexamethasone 200 mg also can be an alternative to iv methylprednisolone a patient who is on on uh, uh, on, on a follow up after this pulse therapy can be started on azathioprine 2 to 3 mg per kg body weight is a good choice or mycophenolate mofetil also can be given the, the dose is also 2 to 3 mg uh, per kg body weight uh, or 500 mg Uh, bd or tid so that can be given in a chronic follow up there are some drugs which are called as monoclonal antibodies that also can be used in uh, uh, sle exacerbation or sle uh, sle follow up rituximab is one of the com- most common drug which is used its dose is iv 375 mg per meter square once weekly for four doses belimumab is another drug which is a human monoclonal antibody iv dose is 10 mg per kg body weight every 2 weeks 3 doses ustekinumab is another drug that can be used uh, that is a il12 and il23 inhibitor dose is 45 mg 0 and 4 weeks and then every 12 weeks thereafter these all drugs are uh, these drugs are called as monoclonal antibodies the most common drug is rituximab for sle exacerbation it can be used along with steroids or it can be used as a single drug antiphospholipid antibodies should be treated if it is not a pre- patient is not a pregnant lady or a pregnant patient you can use warfarin or dabigatran that uh, both are uh, oral anticoagulants if the patient is pregnant then you have to go for a heparin or Uh, low molecular weight heparin the target inr should be 2 to 2.5 so you should avoid further complication because of antiphospholipid syndrome so start heparin along with heparin you start warfarin slowly after one week stop heparin and continue warfarin or dabigatran in pregnant ladies you have to continue only heparin so we have discussed about clinical features of sle treatment plans of sle various antibodies of sle Thank you.